Welcome back to my office and to another edition of our Books and Quotes series. Today we'll be talking about this book, Why We Get Sick. That's a pretty good question, right? <laughs> kind of a comprehensive question. It doesn't say why we get diabetes. He says, why do we get sick? It's written by Benjamin Bickman. And uh, Benjamin Bickman is... Um, a researcher, he's not a medical doctor, but he knows a lot and he's become fascinated by the whole issue of insulin resistance. And he has so much to say about it in this book. And he basically says, it is the lurking monster behind heart disease, behind strokes, behind diabetes, obviously behind high blood pressure and so many other issues, dementia, Alzheimer's and so forth. So this is uh, quite an ambitious book as he tries to make the case that behind almost all the major diseases we're facing in modern civilized nations and maybe some that aren't so civilized, uh, there is insulin resistance. If you can just figure out what's causing the insulin resistance, bam, you've got it made. You, and all you have to do is just stop doing whatever that is. One of the things I noticed was in the uh, the people that spoke highly and endorsed his book. It's on the back. It's also in the front. But the 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 names are kind of a who's who among the low carb folks. So as I started reading down those names, I thought, okay, this guy thinks like I do, and like so many of the guys that I respect do. Uh, Rob Wolf uh, says he un uh, Bickman unpacks the root cause of modern diseases. Nina or Nina Teichels, uh speaks highly of the book. Dr. Asim Maholtra, very sharp fella, also in the low carb camp. Michael Eads, again, very smart fella in the low carb camp, says thoroughly researched, extensively documented why we get sick as a comprehensive, indispensable primer on insulin resistance and how it affects virtually every system in the body. And of course, Mike Eads has written his classic uh, protein power book that speaks very much along the same lines. And then the foreword is written by the, I guess you could say the, the big grandfather of the movement these days. Uh, it used to be Dr. Bernstein, but now Jason Fung, I think, is more popular than Dr. Uh, Bernstein, although he's still going and still uh, helping a lot of people, and I highly respect Dr. Bernstein. Anyway, uh, you know, as I read these, it made me aware of uh, several different camps and several different approaches to diabetes. And one approach is you just keep going and doing what you were doing and hope you get lucky. And sadly, that is a, one of the major approaches people take. Well, doc says, I've got diabetes. I don't even want to think about it. I'll just keep eating like I've been eating, living like I've been living, and hope that I can make it for quite a while. Uh, not very smart. Another approach is, well, just go to the doctor, get some meds prescribed, and hope that those meds help you out. Again, in my opinion, not very smart. Not that you shouldn't go to the doctor. By all means, you should, and you may need to take meds. But there's got to be more than that. And of course, what I advocate is a lifestyle transformation and uh, has to do with the way you eat and the fact you need to start exercising. Uh, those are the two things. But as I was looking at all these different guys, it reminded me of something that my mom used to say uh, having to do with politics. Now, if you're not familiar with American politics, you might not know that we have two major parties, political parties in our nation, the Democrats and the Republicans. And my mom used to say when I was young, and I never forgot it for some reason, well, I never worry about what party they're from in terms of voting for president. My, my parents were not very political and they were just good, decent, middle class, hardworking Christian folks. And they didn't get into politics much at all, didn't know much about politics. But my mom used to say, well, I don't care about what party they're from. I just vote for whoever I think is going to be the best man for the job. Speaking about the presidential election. Well, that sort of made sense to me when I was younger. I thought, okay, we'll vote for the best man. That sounds reasonable. But I remember a class in high school on government where the teacher kind of addressed that question. He said, some people say, I just vote for the best man. I don't worry about the political party. And then he went on to say, but that's not very 
politically aware. There's a big difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. And if you don't know that difference and you're just like, well, I'll just vote for whoever I seems to be the best guy, uh, you're not very astute politically. And I got to thinking about that and I thought, well, maybe mom's wrong. (laughs) Maybe there is a big difference. And as I became an adult and got into uh, uh, learning a little bit about politics, I realized there is a huge chasm between what Democrats basically espouse and believe and what the Republicans do. And uh, to to just say, well, one's as good as the other. I mean, you could make the point... (laughs) There are stinkers in both parties, and I think you'd be pretty safe in saying that. But there is a huge difference philosophically and in terms of the kind of government they espouse and the policies they proclaim. And so anybody that knows much about politics is going to either lean left or lean right. They're going to lean Democrat or lean Republican. And I I have my leanings. I don't just go and vote for the best man. I won't tell you what my leanings are, but if you know me much at all, you could probably guess which way I lean. But that's beside the point. Now, the point I'm really making about this is there are two groups of doctors that advocate uh, victory over diabetes. One would be Dr. Neil Bernard and his company, uh, Dr. McGregor and uh, Neil, uh, uh, excuse me, Dean Ornish. They preach low fat and uh, mostly plants or all plants. And they don't worry about carbs and they don't worry about insulin. They don't worry about testing. They don't talk about those things much at all. And then you got the low carb guys like Dr. Bernstein, Dr. Fung, and these guys that have advocated for this book, uh, Rob Wolf, Nina Teichels, Asim Maholtry, uh, Holtra, Michael Eads. And these guys are all, well, they're almost all doctors. Nina is not. Uh, Rob is not either. But Dr. Maholtra and Dr. Eads are. Sean Baker is another one. These guys are all in the low-carb camp, so you can kind of figure out where he's coming from. And, you know, when you first find out you've got diabetes, you might not know one camp from the other. And you maybe never even thought about what's the best approach to beat diabetes. The average 32-year-old guy who's uh, not the least bit concerned with diabetes, they have no clue. But there's a huge difference between the Dr. Neil Bernard and his camp and Dr. Jason Fung and his camp. I mean, there's a chasm. It's an enormous chasm. And you can't just say, well, Dr. Bernard seems like he knows what he's talking about. Or, well, I think Jason Fung, uh, I kind of like him. You got to find out what is it they're saying? What are they advocating? And why should you believe one over the other? They can't both be right. Although, in one sense, they can both be right. And that is, if they steer you away from a, a standard diet, eating a lot of fat and a lot of sugar and a lot of carbs, if they at least get you away from all the sugar and the junk carbs, they're doing you a favor. So some people do improve on the low fat, don't worry about the carbs diet, but it is by far, uh, by no means the ideal in my opinion. Anyway, you're going to have to decide that. You're going to have to do some research and some thinking. One of the things that kind of amazes me is a lot of people, they look at the, the issue for about two or three days or a week and they boom, instantly say, I'm going to go low carb. They just figured out that fast. That seems to be the most reasonable. My uh, statement or my thought is this, take Mike the glucose meter with you, whichever way you go and see how he approves of your new diet. If you're going to go on the all rice diet, like one of these guys advocates, see what your glucose meter says about eating a big bunch of rice for a meal. He's not going to like it. So you don't really need me or Dr. Fung or anybody else to tell you that if you check with your glucose meter, he'll pretty much steer you the right way. And that's what he did me. Well, we're not going to have time to go very deep into this book at all. We're just kind of touching the beginning. We'll we'll cover it some more in weeks to come. Uh, it is a good book and I, I recommend you get it. It's not as easy to read as Dr. Fung's book. One thing I like about Dr. Fung Number one, he's very smart. Number two, he knows what he's talking about. Number three, he knows the research and the studies. And number four, he's easy to read. He he just is a good writer that uses a lot of illustrations. He doesn't get so deep that he loses you. And almost anybody can read Dr. Fung with Benjamin Bickman. A little harder, not as bad as some, but a little harder. Anyway, Dr. Fung writes the foreword for this book. So Benjamin Bickman was smart <laughs> to get Dr. Jason Fung to write the foreword. He said, uh, Dr. Fung now in his foreword says this, 
the top two causes of death as well as five of the top seven causes. And then he lists some of these top causes of death, heart disease, cancer, cerebrovascular disease, Alzheimer's disease, and diabetes. These are all related to chronic metabolic diseases. What he's saying is, on your death certificate, they may write heart attack. But if you go deeper, it's related to insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. On your, on your death certificate, they may write stroke that took you out. But if you go deeper, what was behind the stroke was insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. You see, we sometimes say, well, diabetes, there's, you know, 15% of American adults are diabetic or whatever the percentage is. And then you can go to pre-diabetes, which is just a, a lighter form of diabetes. And now it jumps up to 20 some percent. And then you can go to insulin resistance, which means your A1C may be below pre-diabetic. And still you've got a problem. And the reality is most American adults, I think we could say most adults in the world, especially when you move into the 40s and beyond, are insulin resistant. You can find that out very easily. Eat a high carb meal. Eat some, uh, a big bunch of rice and some beans. Have a dessert. Drink, uh, wash it all down with a soda. And if your glucose goes up anywhere close to 200, you've got insulin resistance. That wouldn't have happened when you were 12 years old, but it, it's happening now. So even though your A1C may say 5.5, 5.4, 5.6, and you're not even officially pre-diabetic, if you can jump up anywhere close to 200 milligrams per deciliter and, and uh, whatever that works out to be in millimoles, uh, about an hour after you eat to an hour and a half after you eat, uh, you've got problems. So anyway, Dr. Fong says, behind all this is metabolic disease. He goes on to say, speaking of the book that you're about to read in his foreword, this is the foreword by Dr. Jason Fung. He says, you're about to learn that a lot of it comes down to one root cause, insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia, meaning too much insulin in the blood. That's a fancy long word, hyperinsulinemia, but we're hearing it more and more. And as he says, it's you've got too much insulin going on in your bloodstream. It's just all over the place. Your pancreas is being forced to put out way too much insulin. Your A1C may still be relatively decent. Even your fasting glucose may not be too bad. But it's taking you three times as much insulin to get the job done. And that can't go on. Eventually, that will break your body down and you'll end up with full-scale diabetes. Now, Dr. Fung says, but wait, isn't that actually two root causes? In other words, insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. He says, no, they're the same thing, like two sides of the same coin, differing only in the way you look at it. So this evil monster of insulin resistance is behind all kinds of issues. And that's the whole point of this book. He talks about heart disease. He talks about dementia. He talks about uh, sexual problems and, and various things. And he says, Insulin resistance is the boogeyman, the elephant in the room, the major problem hiding behind all these other symptoms. So you, got, you go to the doctor, you say, well, I'm having pain in my chest, or uh, I think I may have had a, a light stroke, or I've got this, I've got that. And behind all of it, it, according to him, is likely to be insulin resistance. Not that there aren't other things that don't relate to it, but so many things do relate to insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin in the blood. So many things do relate to this that you need to deal with it. When I was 20 some years old, I would eat a pancake breakfast on Saturday morning with a lot of good old sugary syrup on top of those pancakes. And by noon, I'd get all shaky. I could hardly sign my name very well. I didn't know it. I had never even heard of the term insulin resistance. I sure have now. But I had it way back in my 20s. I wasn't diabetic. Had I gone to a doctor and say, you know, give me a test, see if I'm diabetic, he would have said, no, Dennis, you're not diabetic. But I had insulin resistance. I was on the way. And I'm convinced that most adults 
are all marching toward the land of diabetes. Imagine if in America, we all decided we'd come and live in Canada. We're going to desert America. We're going to march toward Canada. So everybody's walking. For some reason, we can't drive our cars. We all have to walk. So some people are going to get to Canada quicker than others, right? If you live in Florida, it's going to take you a long time to walk to Canada. If you live in Michigan, you'll get there a whole lot sooner. And some people are just slow. So they're just not going to get there very fast. Others are very speedy. They're jogging to Canada. But we're all going to get there. We're all moving the same direction. That's how it is in our world, not just America, but the whole world. We're all marching toward diabetes, toward heart disease, toward strokes. We're all marching toward an ugly end to our lives. And it doesn't need to be that way. So check out this book and we'll talk some more about it in some of our Books and Quotes series uh, as the weeks go by. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.